Hey, what's up? Welcome back. Today is going to be a very chill one. I'm going to be showcasing the three different cameras that I use for all of my photography. All right, um, just quickly before we get into the video, I want to say thank you very much for all of the support with this YouTube channel so far. If you're subscribed to my channel, then Thank you very much. If you're not, then what are you waiting for? Subscribe to my channel, why not? Since I've made this channel, there's actually quite a few new people subscribed, so hi to all of you. My name is Tats. I am a photographer based in Sydney, Australia, and I've been shooting pics for a very long time, but recently I've sold all my gear and bought three new cameras, which I'm going to showcase to you today. So, my camera bag. I don't actually have a camera bag and I use this sometimes just to store all of the things if I'm bringing a few things along to like a trip. But yeah, let me show you the cameras that I am using. The first camera I want to showcase is actually the one filming the video right now. It's the Fuji X100F. This digital Fuji camera is a rangefinder style and I've been using this to take a lot of everyday life things and street photography specifically. I find the build quality of this camera and its low profile look makes it really easy to go shoot street photography and not be noticed by too many people. People don't usually come up and ask what I'm doing as the camera itself looks really cute and it's not too invasive. I really like this camera for a couple reasons. Firstly, the build quality on it is great. It feels really nice to hold. And also all the dials on the top are really like, they make really nice noise and um, it feels good to like use it, <laughs> use the camera. Another great thing I like about this camera is the film presets that are built into the camera. All the JPEG images that I shoot, I rarely edit them just because as each preset has a really nice color balance already attributed to it. And yeah, I find that I can just upload these images straight away, maybe with a few adjustments of exposure or something. This camera actually has a lens that you can't take off. It's a 35 millimeter lens, which is quite ideal for street photography. It's a little bit wider of a lens, so I can take pictures and usually get everything inside. And since it's fixed and I can't zoom in or zoom out, I have to physically walk closer to a subject or further away. Now these days with COVID, getting close and personal with strangers isn't really the most ideal thing. So, so I think I would prefer a little bit tighter of a focal length, maybe 50 millimeters, but Hey, this was great for the last two years that I've been using it anyway. Nice. So if you've been shooting digital for a very long time and just like me, I got bored of it. So actually, I think film is a very good switch up for that. My next camera is this Contax T2 35mm point and shoot film camera. The Contax T2 is a small point and shoot camera that uses 35 millimeter film. Among all of the point and shoots, I guess this is one of the more pricier versions. But with that comes a very solid build quality and a great sharp lens. I've actually made a video expressing my feelings about this camera already. If you want to check it out, please do. It's an awesome camera. I've been using this to take pictures of uh, personal things as well as some street photography. Unlike other point and shoots, there's a few different functions on this camera, which I can use to 
make my shots a little bit more intentional and creative. And I really love shooting black and white film on this camera. Okay, my final camera is also my most recent purchase. This is my medium format Mamiya 645 1000S. So firstly, this camera is a bit chunkier than my other two. It's definitely not low profile, looks super retro and it's a little bit heavier than my other two cameras. But this has a very specific reason of why I purchased it and it is for portrait photography. I should mention that this is a medium format film camera, which is different to the smaller 35 millimeter format. As you can see, medium format, also known as 120 film, is a lot larger than 35 millimeter film. And actually it comes in a variety of different formats within itself. My camera is a 6x45, there's a 6x6, a 6x7 and etc. So this one is actually the smallest of all of the medium formats, which means that the image quality isn't as good as a 6x7. However, I do get more photos per roll with this camera. Um, in the future, I might upgrade to a bigger camera system, but for now, this is doing me just fine. Like I said, I purchased this camera for portrait photography specifically. The lens that I have on this camera is an 80mm f2.8. This allows me to create a lot of subject separation, where I can get a subject in focus and completely blur out the background. The image quality of the pictures I've taken with this are actually incredible. I've never shot with something so detailed. Cool thing about this camera is it's very modular. I can take apart all of the components and replace them with different bits. I am thinking of getting a new lens in the future, maybe something a little wider so I can take some landscapes as well. And you can also switch out the viewfinder on the top. A difficulty that I am getting accustomed to with this camera is actually looking down through this viewfinder. Everything is flipped. So if I tilt my camera to the left, it shows that image, but in reverse. So it's a bit disorienting. Also the focusing system on this camera is completely new to me. So still getting used to that as well. But once I do get used to all of these things, I will definitely make a video on this camera specifically and my thoughts about it. So for the past few years, those three cameras are what I've been using for all of my photography. I've had a few questions on Instagram asking me what camera or lenses or film that I use. So this video is for all of you. If you've enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up down below. It's really easy and it helps my channel grow. If you've made it this far into the video and you still haven't subscribed to my channel, then what's going on? You know what to do. Just wanted to include a bit of a life update to what's going on in Sydney, Australia at the moment. A lot of my viewers are actually from the United States, so what's up to all of you? Thanks for tuning in. At the moment, Sydney's in a bit of a pickle. We've been in lockdown for about three months now, and I'm going a little crazy because all my photo shoot ideas and plans are can't do it as I can't leave a five kilometer radius of my own place. But it's looking good because I think halfway through next month we're going to be able to start doing things again. I've got a couple photo shoot ideas and locations that I want to shoot at. I think one of the first things I want to do is actually go shoot at the Opera House. Um, if there's any other locations that you're interested in at Sydney, like the Harbour Bridge or something, let me know in the comments. I'm trying to think of locations and photo shoot ideas that would interest all of you. So any ideas, please let me know. Anyways, thanks for checking out this video and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.